Welcome to a special edition of the Balancing Act, Behind the Mystery. Today, we're exploring neuromyelitis optica, or NMO, an autoimmune disease that targets the central nervous system. NMO is unpredictable and often strikes totally out of the blue, attacking the optic nerves, the spinal cord, causing blindness, paralysis, and even worse. It's closely related to multiple sclerosis, which is something that I've had to deal with for the last 40 years of my life. That's right, Montel. Actually, autoimmune diseases affect one out of eight people. So let's meet a mother whose relentless fight to save her daughter's life has forever changed the landscape for patients with NMO. Let's go behind the mystery. My daughter was 14, it was 2008. She said she had an eyeball headache and things were starting to get blurry and she was losing color. And I thought she had, you know, an eye infection or something was brewing that was simple. She's never been sick. Went to the eye doctor who did some tests and said, hmm, this is interesting that your 14-year-old daughter should have inflammation um, around the eye and optic neuritis. I want to send you to a neurologist. And I remember him going through the little boxes on his little pad of, you know, the test he was going to run. And one of them was for something called NMO, uh, neuromyelitis optica. And um, I said, oh, what's that? And he goes, oh, well, that, that would be a nightmare. She doesn't have that. And so it began, the nightmare. And I remember being around the phone with my husband, Bill, and hearing that uh, she probably had four years to live. I felt like I was going to just be sick and pass out, and I just I had no idea what I was even going to do in that moment. He actually referred me to a, a neuro-ophthalmologist who knew about the work that was going on at the Mayo Clinic. And, you know, it was interesting because I, didn't, I just wanted to meet one other person. Like, is there one other person on the planet that has what Allie has? And Mayo Clinic really seemed to be the first place where I felt like I wasn't just hopeless and helpless. I could do something. NMO was historically considered a variant of multiple sclerosis. In the mid-1990s, the Mayo Clinic formed a special research group to study this distinct group of patients and define NMO more clearly. Dr. Dean Wingerchuk was part of that group. Due to the efforts of the Mayo Clinic, the test for aquaporin-4 is the most recognized diagnostic test for NMO today. It was really in 2004 when the antibody uh, that targets aquaporin-4 was discovered. Um, that discovery showed that patients who have the disease NMO clinically um, usually have the antibody, about three quarters of them do, but people with multiple sclerosis virtually never do. So that was a very big change for us and ultimately was convincing to the field that this was a distinct disease. I'm in Minnesota, I'm with Allie, and went to see the one doctor that was there that was working in this space, and he confirmed the diagnosis. I remember him looking at me and saying, Victoria, within the next few months, Allie is probably gonna start going into the next phase of this, which potentially could be paralysis and losing the ability to walk and function. The antibody that we use to diagnose NMO is also important because the, that antibody is really the cause of the disease, we believe. Aquaporin-4 is the target. It's present throughout the brain, the optic nerve, and the spinal cord. And for reasons we don't fully understand, it's the optic nerve and the spinal cord that take the brunt of the attacks. The symptoms in NMO depend on where the immune system happens to be attacking at the time the disease is active. I said, well, I'm gonna cure this. We're gonna cure this. I've got, thank goodness, a checkbook. You're doing research and we are going to figure this out. At the same time, watching my daughter have to go through what became multiple transverse myelitis attacks and optic neuritis. So it was balancing a lot at the same time. I was really caught between hope and despair and started the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation to help really find a cure. Well, we'd like to see cure for this disease and cure meaning permanent remission from attacks of NMO 
uh, without the need for ongoing immune therapy that puts people at risk. We also have a lot of unmet needs as far as restoring therapy, repairing prior damage, and treating symptoms for people who are still battling the after effects of their prior attacks. While the Foundation began searching for answers, NMO was permanently changing another patient's life. It was around 1999. I was 20 years old in my third year in college, and I noticed one of my eyes the vision went blurry, so I went to the doctor. They realized it was something neurological, so I had MRIs done. Um, I did a lumbar puncture. They did learn that it was optic neuritis or optic nerve inflammation, and it was a few years later after that, I started experiencing numbness in one of my legs, so then I went back to the doctors. They ran all the same tests again. Still couldn't pinpoint what it was. They tried to rule out many different autoimmune diseases. They were trying to test me for lupus, for Sjogren's disease, but still nothing was coming up. But at that point, they said, because I've had two different symptoms that point to MS, that's when the doctors decided by default to diagnose me with multiple sclerosis. I was living with MS and went on the MS therapies, trying to stave off any more symptoms of this disease. And we noticed though that I would still continue to get a lot of attacks every year. And it was affecting my optic nerves, my spinal cord. I remember my worst attack was when uh, over a period of several days, I suddenly became paralyzed from the neck down. It was very frustrating and scary because I thought that when you were diagnosed and you were put on the treatment for that disease that it would help and that it would keep all the attacks at bay. But obviously in my case, it didn't. And then it was finally several years after that when my blood was sent off uh, to the Mayo Clinic and they had an NMO biomarker test that was done and I was correctly diagnosed with neuromyelitis optica. I actually went to go see a specialist in NMO, so I flew to Arizona and went to the Mayo Clinic. I was put on treatment that worked for me uh, so that I would no longer have attacks, but of course, by then, I'd had so many attacks on my optic nerve that they atrophied over time, so that's how I gradually lost my vision. But fortunately, I've been fairly symptom-free for many years. A few years later, I had the opportunity to go on MasterChef and compete in a TV cooking competition. I actually won season three in 2012, and that really put me in the public spotlight to be a spokesperson for NMO and to be a patient advocate. When I first discovered the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation, I attended Patient Day around 2009. The foundation created a space for all of the NMO patients to get together and connect and share stories. For me, I met lifelong friends there. I'm thankful for the foundation because they've done a lot of advocacy work and research to help get treatments approved for NMO by the FDA. And now I'm happy to say that I've been on one of those treatments for many years and I've been relapse free for over 15 years. Welcome back everyone. Joining us is Dr. Michael Yeaman, Professor of Medicine at UCLA and Chief Medical Advisor to the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you here. so much for being with Good us today, doctor. And also with us today is a young doctor who is living with NMO. In 2002, she was diagnosed with Sjogren's and 13 years later found herself blind, paralyzed, and intubated. Welcome Dr. Kina Peppers. Doctor, thank you so much for being thank with us this so morning. Thank you so much for having yes, me. Yes, ma'am. Dr. Kina, let me start with you. you. You've obviously been through some pretty serious challenges yes. with NMO. Can yes. you share some with us? It was absolutely crazy. In 2015, I started having these intractable hiccups and I went into the hospital to get help. When doctors came to my room and asked me to move my feet, I kept thinking, why are they asking me that? Because of course I can move my feet. But you couldn't. But I couldn't. And I caught myself opening my eyes to see who are these people asking me these questions. And I realized that my eyes were already open. So I was blind and I was paralyzed. Did doctors understand what was going on or did they even realize how they could treat you? Well, the good thing is that my neurologist really, really thought 
that I had NMO. And they sent that blood test off to Mayo. And they actually got the antibody test back positive. And then my treatment started with the rituximab. How did you bounce back? Because, I mean, you're looking great these days. Right? <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Well, I actually had intense physical therapy. Physical therapy where I had to learn how to walk. And I progressed and my vision started coming back. And it took time. Well, you know, like I said, I have MS, and in some ways, some of the symptoms from NMO are pretty similar, but what's the difference between those two diseases? They're both autoimmune diseases. What's so important about knowing the difference between these two diseases is that they require different treatments. And if you treat NMO with MS medicines, the disease can get worse, mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm. Where are we today in advancements in treating NMO? There's a, a huge amount of progress that's going on now. In the last 15 years, um, with the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation, we have advanced understanding what causes NMO and who's more at risk of severe outcomes in NMO. We've also been fortunate to really push the pharmaceutical industry to now have three approved therapies. For NMO. You are uh, clearly on one of those therapies now, so how are you doing? Are you doing well? I started on one of those therapies and I'm doing so much better. Kina, any advice you would give to someone out there that could be struggling with an autoimmune disease? I definitely say do not allow yourself to become the disease and make sure you educate yourself about what the disease is. So Thank you so much for being with us this you. morning, absolutely. And Dr. Yemi, you're going to stick around. We're going to take a little break, and when we come back, yep. we're going to talk about, you know, some inspiration that's coming from a future generation. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Behind the Mystery of Neuromyelitis Optica, or NMO. A little over a year ago, during various school break vacations, 12-year-old Trey was experiencing recurring bouts of excessive vomiting and was in and out of different emergency rooms around the country. And the only answers his father, Adam, was getting were no answers at all. Let's meet Trey's dad, Adam. What a story. Take a look. When we were transferred to the hospitalist unit, the first thing that happened is they brought a neurology team. The neurology team did a, a quick workup. They identified a variety of neurological challenges that he was suffering from at the time. And they immediately ordered um, a lumbar puncture, which is a spinal tap, um, and a full MRI um, of his brain and of his upper and lower spinal cord. About you know, an hour after that, a uh, physician pulled me aside at that point um, and told me that something was really wrong. Um, they had found lesions on his brain. When I saw him uh, attached to so many cords and other things, having trouble breathing, moving, talking, it was really hard. It was traumatic and horrifying. My dad kept saying it's going to be okay, but it just felt different. I never thought he would be back to normal again. So that same evening, Trey started having a real difficult time breathing. Um, his oxygen levels were dropping, so they immediately brought him down to an, the ICU. About an hour later, his breathing became so challenged that they had to intubate him for the first time. Seeing him intubated with the tube down his nose was, um, was difficult. He was nearly fully paralyzed. Um, he had slight function in his left hand, um, no ability to speak. Um, at that point, the neurology team came in and they let me know that the lesions were unusual, that they were sending off his blood and his spinal fluid to Mayo for a series of tests. Actually, one of the, uh, the fellows found something on the MRI that was very interesting. And so at that point, he thought it was NMO. Trey couldn't wait any longer. And I uh, agreed to, for them to start down the path of treatment for NMO um, prior to receiving the results from Mayo. And there was a lot of risk to that. 
At the same time Trey was starting his treatment for NMO, I did research online and found the Duthie Jackson Foundation. Got in contact with them, uh, expected to maybe hear from someone from the foundation at some point. About an hour later, I got a phone call from Bill. Bill was pretty amazing and spoke with me like another father who had been through the same thing. Bill immediately connected me with the foundation's chief clinical advisor, Dr. Michael Yaman, and he immediately provided me with direction in terms of how to get my son better and um, felt like I won the lottery. So Trey came home only about a year ago now, um, one of the greatest days of our lives. And uh, just about three months ago, he was back on the basketball court. Without the Duthie Jackson Foundation, Trey wouldn't be in a position today where he's receiving the treatment that is going to provide him with a completely normal life. I know at the end, it'd be okay, because my dad was there. He's kind of like my hero, because like he, and he fought very hard to uh, get the medicine and stuff for me so I could get better. I feel healthy and strong like I used to be before the hospital. Wow. Oh my goodness. What an amazing young man. Mm -hmm. That's really a testament to all the hard work that you guys have been doing, right? It is. You know, the patients we've learned from today represent sort of the past, the present, and the future for NMO, but also other autoimmune diseases. It's a story of hope, and it's also a story of we are not done yet. If we do not focus on cures, we're not focusing high enough. Love that. You know, the foundation has had such an impact over the last 15 years. What's next? What we've really been able to do in the last 15 years is understand the disease to the point that we can try to treat it. But the treatments, as good as they are at preventing relapses, also come with some risks. And the risks can include infection and cancer. And that's one of the really interesting parts of this story, is that immunity, uh, when it goes sideways, in the case of autoimmune disease, it's really a mistaken identity where there is too little immune tolerance. And that means the immune system is not tolerant enough. And that is the exciting frontier that we're focused on called tolerization. I mean, I've been facing MS for now 40 years. And you know, we're still trying to figure out a way that we can even breath the term cure. So I'm hoping that your breakthroughs help with diseases like mine. One thing about these kinds of breakthroughs is that they create faster ways to the next breakthrough. So one success begets the next success. So great having you today. Thank, thank you, you so much. So much. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you your so time. Much for being here, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. And when we come back, the next steps in the fight against NMO. So stay right there. The Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation is now 15 years old in making medical breakthroughs by accelerating research as well as bringing together experts and patients from around the world. As founder Victoria Jackson says, the proof is in the patients. In 2008, when I started the Guthrie Jackson Charitable Foundation, it's kind of crazy to think that this had been a condition that had already been around for 100 years, and yet there was nothing. There's so many assets that we have created, everything down to even how there's a criteria for how doctors diagnose NMO. There's been a biobank put together, which I started collecting blood samples, tissue samples from patients. Now we have 100,000 samples. We've created a data collection center where we've standardized everybody's information. We have an extraordinary app that you can literally download on your phone, Animal Resources. Just think about how that in itself has helped so many people if they're having an attack going into an emergency room where a lot of people don't know about this. So yeah, I'm very proud of what the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation has done and the horizons that we're moving into and the world coming up of cures. And at the same time, I'm still like Mama Bear to my daughter, Allie. Make sure that she's happy and healthy and goes on to the next part of her life. And I'm absolutely not stopping until I find a cure for this, for Allie and for everybody who has NMO. To learn more about the incredible work the Guthy Jackson Charitable Foundation is doing, just visit GuthyJacksonFoundation.org. 
And so, and of course, you can always visit our website, thebalancingact.com. We'll see you next time.